Sprint races get a lot of stick from fans and drivers, but the action in Friday's second session was non-stop. A wet qualifying session made the fears about the track surface come true, as the painted surface proved to be a massive mistake by the track owners, but it made for fantastic viewing. The excitement of the session couldn't mask the disappointment of a shockingly bad Alpine team, whose massive upgrade package proved to be a complete failure. Today, I'm going to check out the action-packed first day of running at the Chinese Grand Prix and discuss the massive failure that was Alpine's completely overhauled car. So, don't go anywhere. It was great to see that beautifully flowing turn 1, 2, 3, 4 sequence down the hill back in action in China, and the first day of running did not disappoint. I would put good money on absolutely no one having Lance Stroll top a session by 0.3 seconds on a Chinese GP bingo card. An Alpine bottom of the timing sheet probably was though, but seeing Pierre Gasly's soft tyre lap below the hard tyre times of four cars was still a surprise. The new track surface on the Shanghai circuit threatened to make it an interesting race, but the drivers are going to have to cut out the lock up and overshoot the pit lane entry move, which caught out Alonso and Piastri in practice. With wet weather threatening throughout the sprint shootout and the track catching fire, Zhou Guan Yu made it out of the first qualifying stint for the first time this season in front of his home fans. Daniel Ricciardo managed to outqualify his teammate for the first time this season, as V Carb told Yuki he would have grip which just didn't appear. Alpine's upgrades proved to be completely ineffective, as they could only manage 16th and 17th after Pierre Gasly unleashed a torrent of frustration upon his race engineer. Do they still have the money in the budget to develop out of the hole they're in? Because a new chassis is a massive investment, for apparently no return. More on that in a minute, though. As the rain started to come down at the end of SQ2, Lance Stroll's impressive FP1 was all for nothing as he finished 15th, but it was George Russell who really got punished. A bad first lap cost him as he couldn't improve from 11th as the downpour began. The noise from the crowd as Sauber's Zhou Guan Yu made it into the top 10 was fantastic though, and on a weekend when Valtteri Bottas has said that his team's terrible car is going to cost him in the driver's market, Sauber, who had absolutely no upgrades, found some serious performance for Friday's competitive session. The excitement really ramped up though in SQ3 when the rain really started to fall, and memories of Turkey 2020 came flooding back to fans eager to see some chaos in China. Then, a new track surface similar to the fresh one laid in Shanghai combined with wet weather to create absolute carnage on track. And it was carnage that ensued. Charles Leclerc spun into the barrier on a warm-up lap which set the tone for the ice skating exhibition that would ensue. Clearly, the new track surface, which created so much conversation before the weekend, was not up to standard. A number of cars lost it at the final corner and had their lap times deleted, but it was the old hands of F1 who showed their experience as Hamilton and Alonso took second and third on the grid for the sprint race. Above them all though was Lando Norris, who has always been impressive in the wet, but exceeded anything expected of him by taking pole by 1.261 seconds. His time was preliminarily deleted as he left the track at the final corner on the way into his fastest lap, but considering the conditions and the fact he went through the gravel trap, the stewards rightly decided that he gained no advantage from the mistake and reinstated it. The sprint race starts at 4am UK time, but for that grid, I could be tempted to cut my beauty sleep short. Verstappen, Alonso and Hamilton all battling out right behind Lando Norris is the stuff that F1 dreams are made of. At the moment, rain looks very unlikely for the rest of the weekend, but a messed up grid always makes for exciting viewing. What doesn't make for exciting viewing is the Alpine team. They are desperately in need of turning around their fortunes, so the French outfit has brought forward to Shanghai a new floor for its A524, although only Esteban Ocon is benefiting from the change, with Pierre Gasly receiving the update next month in Miami. The changes include a modified floor body, modified floor fences and floor edges, all of which are intended to improve airflow and increase overall downforce. Importantly for Alpine, the new floor has been fitted to a new, lighter chassis. A new F1 chassis comes in around the three quarters of a million dollars mark, which means three new ones, one for each car and a spare, will set the team back roughly $2.25 million once they've all been manufactured. Those figures don't account for the design time either, 
that's just the cost of parts and manufacturing. Alpine had to make massive changes to try and find some performance, and a new chassis this early in the season shows that, but it appeared to make absolutely no difference to their form. Esteban Ocon, who had the new parts, was actually almost a tenth of a second slower than teammate Pierre Gasly in the sprint qualifying, as both of them were knocked out in the first of the three sessions. The lack of impact of the upgrades is more disappointing than their overall performance has been this season. The team made some big statements about needing to improve and rushing this upgrade forward to make that happen, but once again, this new management structure has completely failed to have any impact on track. The last race in Japan underlined how big a challenge we have on our hands to improve our performance level, said team boss Bruno Famine. We must develop the performance of the car in order to fight for higher positions. While it was good to bring the first updates to the car in Suzuka, we must do more. The team has been working extremely hard, and we have been able to bring an upgrade to one car this weekend, one race earlier than planned. Bringing new parts to a sprint race is always a big risk, as you only have 60 minutes to assess how they work and make setup decisions. With no previous running at the track with these technical regulations, the challenge was doubly difficult for the team, and they proved to be no match for it. This isn't the first time Alpine have made this mistake, though. Bringing new parts to a sprint event came back to bite them at last year's Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Though not directly linked to its floor upgrade, Alpine's weekend snowballed out of control after reliability issues in FP1 limited its running, meaning it went into Friday qualifying with barely any data on its new specification. It then had to change Ocon's car setup after finding an alarming amount of plank wear, relegating the Frenchman to a pit lane start. Esteban Ocon will be hoping that the team can find more performance with the new parts in Miami, but whether it is faster or not, Pierre Gasly sounds like he'll just be glad for a change of car. At the end of FP1, Gasly was clearly frustrated with his session. Guys, this is not acceptable, Gasly said over the radio. I haven't learned anything, absolutely nothing. With rumors of the team looking to sell circling, and both drivers looking for a move elsewhere in silly season, this really is Alpine and Renault's lowest ever point. A sad state of affairs for a team with such a storied history of F1 success. The only upside to the current situation is that Alpine may have no other option than to promote promising reserve driver Jack Doohan for 2025. I think he has been trained, and he will be trained this year with quite a long testing program, Bruno Famine said recently, talking about the start of Doohan's extensive preparation. We're going to start soon because we need a car, we need a chassis to run that program. After that, the driver market is going to be very dynamic, he acknowledged. Right now, I can say that we are happy with the drivers we have, but we're prepared for any scenario. Jack needs to test to keep growing. Let's see what his future will be, but it's a bit early to answer that question. The team are clearly resigned to the fact that they're going to lose both F1 drivers for next season, assuming they can find a space elsewhere, and they may be the last option for anyone else on the move. As tempting as a lineup of Logan Sargent and Joe Guan Yu may be, they'll probably prefer to take their chances on their promising junior driver, which is about the only positive I can think of in their current situation. Did you love the Friday running in Shanghai as much as I did? And where do you think Alpine goes now after this failed upgrade? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.